um, back when I was uh, 22 and 32, I had uh, some NDE-like experiences. I was sleeping, it was early morning, and I found myself suddenly in a beautiful tunnel. Now, this was, you know, going on 20 years ago, so uh, I hadn't been interested. I didn't even know what a near-death experience was. And uh, I, I found myself going through a tunnel, and there was all these, uh, like, purples and reds and, and this light at the end. Um, and while I was launching launched basically through this tunnel um i could hear this beautiful chorus of what i can only describe as angel voices um that just um had this this vibration and this choir song that uh just kept getting louder and louder and louder as i was ascending i guess and then i woke up fast forward um 10 years and at 32 again I was sleeping <laughs> early morning and um I uh I was suddenly on a beach in kind of like I felt like water was sort of coming up over my feet um and I started to sort of what felt like sort of um uh, horizontally move upwards into this beautiful beautiful light now you've you know it you've heard it you can it, it it's indescribable the feeling of that light I, I wish i could tap into that feeling again um but uh in the in the way that it was in that experience but i i caught myself halfway up in a sense uh and i said to myself am i dying <laughs> right i'm dying and uh, and then I thought, I'm okay with that, because <laughs> it felt so wonderful, it was so amazing. Oh my gosh. And um, and then I thought to myself, just quickly, it was just a fast thought. Well, I don't want to leave my my partner at the time. I don't want to leave them yet. And uh, and with that thought, just like you've probably heard in other NDE videos. So, what they say like slammed back into my body like a jolt right so those were uh yeah two nd like nde like experiences um in my later 30s i um uh you know i had graduated from uh going through school for a very long time <laughs> to be an industrial designer um a product designer totally different than hypnotist, right? And, uh, and shortly after graduating, uh, you know, I, I talk about like my soul was just like, no, this isn't for you. Even though you've spent all this time uh, doing this, this is this is not your path. So what ended up happening was within a couple days, I had a oh my gosh, like a really rare sleeping disorder, deep despair, deep anxiety, deep depression, lost, lost my life, basically just landed <laughs> face first on the ground. And I remember sitting on the couch, just unable to move because of anxiety, right? So how did I get out of that? <laughs> so, um, I had hypnosis. I wasn't a hypnotist at the time, but I had somebody take me through hypnosis and I was able to come out of that, come out, slowly make my way out of that. And then I thought in um, 2020, I'm going to see about training to be a hypnotist because like, that's what brought me out. I want to help others come out of that stuff too, right? So I trained and during the training, um, I had a, uh, the most, you know, for me, spiritually transformative experience. Um, I was in self-hypnosis, going through some learning of self-hypnosis, and I had this, what I guess, you know, out-of-body type experience, visual experience, um, of being in this beautiful meadow, 
and around the meadow were these beautiful, those big, big mountains, beautiful mountains. And there was just on my left, there was just tons of people. And I couldn't make out their, you know, faces or anything really, but just a lot of people. Now, I didn't grow up with the archetype of um, Jesus in my life. Like, I did not grow up with any religion. Um, but for some reason, that archetype was there in the meadow with me and the people. And suddenly, uh, during the experience, I saw almost all at once having karmic old, like, past life karmic relationships with these people. And it, it was so jolting, right? It jolted me out of the experience. And, um, and I thought to myself, no, I, I want to find out, you know, it was jolting, but I want to find out what's going on here. So I sort of, I, I just intended to go back into the experience and understand. And so I got there back into the experience and then the same people were sort of lined up on the meadow, uh, shoulder to shoulder, in a line on my left, and Jesus <laughs> was uh, handing me um, like a blue crystal stone thing, uh, and I would take it from them and place it in the hearts of these people. So like one at a time, I would place it in the hearts. Now at the time, I had I had no idea what that was about. And that was just half of the experience, because on the way home, I started sort of having this back and forth with, like, a conversation with God or the universe or source. And um, it, was, it was asking me politely <laughs> to sort of clean up my life, like, eat better, treat yourself well, all this stuff. And um, it it was incredible because I, I fought with it at first. But you know what? I want to eat that. <laughs> I don't want to let that go. What? But it became very apparent very quickly uh, by the time I got home, which it, it was like a 40-minute drive home. And uh, by the time I got home, I mean, I was uh, dedicated to changing my life. Um, and at the same time, I felt this indescribable connection like I just knew. I just knew that I would continue beyond this life, right? And um, and and all my fears at the time, my my jealousies my, um, everything that was sort of big in my life that was controlling me, um, they dissipated. And I felt like I was on cloud nine for like three or four weeks. And if I could bottle that emotion and give it to people, I would do it in a heartbeat because it was just so beautiful. So that carried on. Now the emotion dissipated, unfortunately. <laughs> I can still, you know, just get into it a little bit when I really focus on it. But the wonderful thing is that I moved I moved on without the fears and the jealousies and all that stuff that was holding me back before. So, you know, I, I feel, I get a sense that my vibration changed at that time. And I just sort of, that was my new baseline. Do you know what I mean? My baseline before was down here and now my baseline is up here. So the contrast, the feeling dissipates because the contrast is not so much anymore, you know? So um, with that said, I was into NDEs at that time. I was, uh, I started watching NDEs about, I'm going to say 10, nine or 10 years ago. And at that time, um, there really wasn't a lot. I mean, there was a lot if you went to IONS or Enderf and you read and read and read. <laughs> but as for YouTube, there wasn't a ton of information. So I blasted through <laughs> all the NDEs. I was just an NDE junkie. Um, and uh, I... I, I thought, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know why I'm so consumed. Maybe there's a reason. I don't know. 
uh, and so after I learned hypnosis, I started actually working with NDEers to help them um, integrate into the body or sort of get a sense of their experience and maybe feel connected, uh, just different, different things that they want to work on. So that's where I started to go down the spiritual path and hypnosis as well, as well as working with people on stuck emotions and, and limiting beliefs and stuff. Um, there's a whole other practice of my, my business that, uh, is about doing like past life regressions and life between lives and connecting with, um, you know, past loved ones and, and stuff like that. You said was you're helping ending years process and reintegrate their experiences. What kind of, um, difficulties are they going through after an ND? What are the most common threads that you noticed? Yeah, so the most common thread that I notice is um, reintegration. Oftentimes, ND ears will come back to their bodies, but sort of have one, so to speak, one foot out and one foot in. You know, they're, they can pop out of their bodies so easily um and they don't feel very comfortable in their bodies right they're 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 having a hard time integrating um what they what they went through uh you know and and going back to the experience in a sense um whether it's total visual uh, experience or just understanding it more um it helps to sort of anchor the soul back into the body if they're having trouble and they want to do that yeah absolutely i think that's so important because i think one of the things that i hear very often is that after such an experience you understand that you're not your body and um, if sometimes your body has disease or if you see your body in a certain way you sort of begin to see much more clearly that who you are and your body is just actually a tool to serve you and just like we have a car but you are not your car so that's exactly it yeah no you're exactly right yeah and you were saying earlier and it really stuck with me about anxiety that you had a lot of anxiety really bad and that hypnosis helped you with that and i think um within our audience we have a lot of people dealing with grief depression but also anxiety which i think most of us struggle with to be fair um so how can we look at hypnosis to help us with anxiety yeah so um anxiety is if you think of it it's at the subconscious level right uh you can't see it here but i've got a big poster on the wall with a, a um an iceberg on it and um, the tip of the iceberg, the, the part of the iceberg you can see is your conscious mind, right? That's the you and I conversing right now. We're using our conscious mind. The, the part of us that is running the show <laughs> is our subconscious and unconscious mind. So anxiety is something that is unconscious. The symptom of anxiety is uh, unconscious. So if you think of the subconscious as the part of us that has programs running from the past, um, pulls in new information, and if it jibes with what you learned growing up, then you you keep it, <laughs> right? Which you can build and build and build. And then the feelings that we get from anxiety, the chest tightness, um, the, the breath, you know, the, the change in breath, um, the tingling in your hands, the numbness, you know. Um, that is the subconscious mind speaking with the unconscious mind and telling the unconscious mind, send out those, you know, chemicals to the body to make that person feel that way so that they can feel, so that we can feel safe. Now that sounds very odd. Why would anxiety be something that's making you feel safe? The subconscious mind thinks it's keeping you safe by giving you anxiety okay so just say really simple example you've got um you've got a, a party coming up i work with a lot of people going with uh um social anxiety right especially after <laughs> the last few years so you've got a party coming up now 
in the past, maybe at some point at a party, you felt unsafe. Maybe not physically, but just lots of people, stuff going on, you know, maybe someone asked you a question and you didn't quite know the answer or something, anything. Well, now the subconscious mind is running a program in the background saying parties are unsafe, <laughs> right? <laughs> really simple. So when you think about a party now, maybe you, you know, you, you've got something in your subconscious mind saying parties aren't safe. Well, if parties aren't safe, we don't want them to go. So how do we make you not go? We talk to the unconscious mind, get the unconscious mind to send chemicals to the body to make it so it, it's, it freezes, right? And you get that chest tightness and lack of, you know, <laughs> breath change and stuff like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess to cap off the question is hypnosis, we go to the subconscious mind, right? Through rest and relaxation and, and high focus. Um, I do want to say to your, <laughs> your audience here, because I know it's, it's a big question. I get it every single day is, uh, well, am I out of control, right? Am I out of control in hypnosis? Because we see things on TV and on stage and we think things, right? So no, you're not out of control. Really simple. You're in a, a nice meditative state, a theta brainwave state. I'm sure many of your listeners know what theta brainwaves are. Uh, they probably listen to them. They don't even know that that's a hypno hypnotic state. Um, it's a very natural state. And in that state, you're talking back and forth with me. Uh, we're conversing and we're making those deep changes at the subconscious level because you're kind of you're talking to your inner self right you're you're creating that connection with your inner self and that connection with your younger self too that needs you right so that's that's what we do in hypnosis <laughs> so in it for anxiety we look at what you're going through specifically maybe there's a past past event that we need to clear up and understand uh, and then, you know, you can move forward confidently. When you said that you also work with uh, your younger self, it sounds to me like we can perhaps solve a lot of childhood traumas that are still with us and trigger us in different ways in our current lives yeah. through hypnosis. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, every day I work with people on this stuff. Uh, so we go back in time. I do something called timeline hypnosis. So... Uh, we sort of float in our minds back in time and we look from above. Yeah, think about ND years, right? They're looking from above usually. <laughs> and we do the same thing. So we're looking from above. We look down at an old event. We're not, we're not reliving it. We're kind of like scientists um, observing past events and applying new wisdom and new knowledge and new feelings about it. Mm, exactly. And that just helps you move on with whatever you need to move on yeah. in the present. Yeah, I'm such a big fan of resolving <laughs> traumas and going back and, and trying to do that because it feels that otherwise you just stay stuck in situations and they never seem to go away. And what I found is that also the universe will send lessons that you need to learn your way and challenges that you need to overcome. And the more you refuse to do that, the more those nudges will start to become, you know, almost like slaps on the back, which yes. you have to do this now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And those patterns, I mean, it leads very well into the past life regression, right? <laughs> like people come to me with, uh, you know, a pattern that they just can't understand. And who knows, maybe it came from a past life and maybe we can go and visit it uh, and see if there's actually anything there to clear up. Um, uh, so that that happens a lot, too. <laughs> Yeah, so you explore a lot of, um, you know, life between lives and past lives with your clients. So I'm sure you've heard a lot of amazing stories of what happens between our lives. So can we first of all give a definition of what's a life between lives and what's, you know, a past life? Um, and then I'd love to hear if you have some some good stories that you can share with us. Yeah, Um Okay, so life between lives is um, sort of a realm where you, as the client, are are we go um, and you can meet with your higher self, your spirit guides, the council, 
sample groups, stuff like that. Um, you can go to the Akashic Records or the library, right? Um, you can find out about what's been going on in, in your life or, pa or, past, or past lives, right? We can dip into that there, that too. there too. But it's basically a realm where, you know, uh, I'll speak to, to it from the hypnosis perspective. You would uh, come to me with a series of questions and during the um, uh, the session, you are asking these questions to your higher self, to the universe, to the guides, whoever is there as support for you that day. Sometimes people want their higher self, but sometimes a guide shows up. Sometimes uh, people want to know their guides, but their higher self shows up, right? So it's it's different all the time and and you know all all we can do really is go in with the intention and see what happens um someone the other uh week they had um we got to this the beautiful place which i use as a launching ground so imagine i'm working with you and i say okay um sabrina just imagine a beautiful place right a beautiful place that's that's beautiful to you, not not me, <laughs> you. <laughs> so um, we go there and then we invite in your higher self or your guides, whoever's there again for your highest self, your, you know, the, your highest good. And we ask, we ask if Sabrina can go into that realm of life between lives. Now, back to the other week, I had somebody go through it, and, and this happens sometimes, is we ask and they say, no, <laughs> the guides or higher self says, no, uh, the, you know, it's kind of not what's meant to happen today. So in that instance, I said, okay, well, can we ask questions here, right? Can, can so-and-so ask their questions here in this beautiful place? And that was okay. So we went through the, the uh, session asking questions about uh, their life in uh, in the beautiful place instead of in that realm so we didn't go to the library or anything like that we didn't go to the council but uh the person had six six guides come in and then one was sort of the main speaker so to speak and uh and then they got information about their life now and and what patterns are done they're completed and they're sort of stored away and uh so that was interesting but the life between lives basically is a place where you're wondering about this life, what's going on, patterns, why am I doing this, what's my next step, um, what else am I supposed to be doing, stuff like that. Past life regression. People come to me um, with interest in it because they're just interested in it and they want to check it out. Some people have... Um, patterns of uh, health stuff going on and they want to see you know if it's brought in from a past life something that comes up a lot is um, something simple eczema um, eczema for people and a lot of the time what seems to be the case is that we end up going into the past life and it's from being burned in some way um, you know, <laughs> from, a, you know, a fire in a house or uh, witch trials or whatever comes up, right? So that's, that's interesting. Other people come to me when uh, they've got patterns going on, not just with health, but, but relationships, and they're wondering, what the heck, why can't I get over that? <laughs> you know, am I bringing it from a past life? Now, sometimes you're not. Sometimes it's just something from your childhood that's created this pattern. And so, you know, we uh, we often find that out in the session and your mind has sort of a block that won't take you into the past life. And we need to resolve something in this life first before we can go check out a past life. Because um, it's all based on your intention, right? And uh, your intention is driving the session. So if you're coming to a session with the intention of finding out something about you know why do i keep choosing abusive partners right 
your intention is going to drive that, so it will take you where you're meant to go. And if that's your childhood in this life, then we go there and we work on it, and then we can jump into a past life for something else, you know? <laughs> and how can we avoid, because I can imagine some of the situations, imagine that we have been in a war in a previous lifetime or something terrible happened to us. How can we prevent being overwhelmed and finding out maybe things that we wouldn't be able to handle at this moment with the tools and the skills that we have? Yeah. So, um, two things. First, back to the intention, right? Your higher self will not show you anything you can't handle. Number two, these have to work together, these two. Okay. You, you need to find a hypnotist that is very good at taking you out of the body. Now, what do I mean by that? If you go back in time, say, say we're sort of going through a life, lots of battles, right? <laughs> We've been in it. This earth is just war, <laughs> right? So it's like farming and war. <laughs> That's basically it in the past lives. So uh, we sort of, we, we go back and we're going through the life and say, um, you know, you're a man in, in your past life and, and you're in battle. So if you're working with a good hypnotist, they're not going to keep you in the body while you're going through battle. They're going to say, okay, you're just going to rise out of the body. You're going to have it from a top-down perspective. Nothing about this scenario, nothing about this event will, you know, harm you mentally, physically, that kind of stuff, right? And so um, there's also a lot of pre-talk before we go into session that, that if that's the case, you are going to come out of the body very easily. So there's a lot of setup for that, right? So that you are feeling okay. And again, we turn it into, like I said before, almost like a scientist, like, okay, what's going on down there? You become the observer very quickly, right? So you're observing it. Same with when we, uh, we have to close off a life. Me there's a lot of hypnotists out there that don't close the life off. And it is, it's not great. So what do I mean by closing off the life? It means taking, you know, Sabrina, you're in a past life. And we go through the life. We're finding out interesting things. And no matter what, even if there's a war or if it's just a an easy, you know, passing away, we go to the end of the life and we come out of the body, right? Last day of, of your life in that life. And we, again, top down, look down, understand the life, take, um, you know, any healing that we took away from that life, any, any messages, any wisdom, and, um, and we apply it right? And that life is left in the past. Again, it's not going to come up mentally, physically, all that stuff. So closing off the life is really important. And I'll say to any of your listeners that want to do a past life regression, if you go to a hypnotist, make sure one of your questions before you work with them is, do you close off the life? Do you close off the life? Um, and if they do, they'll know exactly what you're talking about. Um, they should know what you're talking about. Um, and, uh, and make sure that they, they do stuff like that. Do you take wisdom from the life, right? That kind of stuff. Do you do healing in the life? So what yeah. is then healing in the life? Do we then do a process of, say, we've done a session together in one of my past lives, I've realized something that was traumatic that's maybe still affecting me nowadays. Do we do something to heal that memory so that I move forward um, in a better way? Yes. Yes. So in that life, I would get you to sort of, again, come out of the body. I would have you then as you, Sabrina, be Sabrina and be looking at the body that you were just in. You know what I mean? So say you were a farmer and you went through... Um, uh, let's say scarcity, right? That comes up a lot. <laughs> we see it a lot in this life, like the scarcity mindset, right? So let's say um, you go back in time, you're a farmer, 
you went through uh, an issue of scarcity and uh, there was a moment where you sort of, let's say, created a pattern of energy that you were pulling into Sabrina's life of scarcity from this old life. So what I would get you to do in that, in that circumstance, if you notice that pattern, is come out of the body, looking back at the farmer. You're now Sabrina, right? And I would say, okay, Sabrina, I'm talking to Sabrina now. What wisdom is there about this old time? in this old life that you can uh, notice, bring through, source, your higher self might be there, guides, right? What is there to learn about this old time so that you can release this, right? And so things that uh, might come up are, you know, that was what was happening back then, there's always a plan, you know, things happen for a reason, it wasn't your fault, you know, those kinds of messages that allow you to let go of that scarcity mindset and also allow the farmer to let go of that scarcity mindset. It's actually incredible. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's incredible to me as I, as I watch and take people through this how uh it's like they're clearing up you know how we can clear up um ancestral traumas and energies and limiting beliefs and and family stuff it, it's almost like you can also do the same at the energetic level I, I believe it's true you can do the same thing at the energetic level for for these past lives right so Something that that farmer you went through can now be released at the soul level for both you and the farmer, even though the farmer seems like it was a past event. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I, I find it incredible. I've had even clients that help a past life person transition so it's like you as sabrina would be there helping your past life move out of that life and transition into this the spirit realm oh wow and That's then i start thinking yeah it is it's very interesting and then i start wondering you know wouldn't it be cool if that on some level in some universe that was actually that person's experience was you being there right it's because we've heard of like everything happening at the same time in a sense right everything's we're experiencing this present moment but really all our lives have been lived do you know what i mean not really no i mean oh. i think i i know i i think i can understand where you're going but i would love if you could explain it yeah so there's sort of something that's being talked about recently or i don't know if recently but um of like all your lives it seems like you know that one's in the past and that one's in the future and that one's in the way way back past but there's this idea that um they're all they're all living out at the exact same moment does that make sense right right yeah it, it's yes. hard for me to wrap my mind around it so i'm i'm kind of new to that uh idea but um yeah, it's always interesting to me when, when clients sort of go back and help help themselves. And I wonder, wow, I wonder if that that life actually experienced that in some way. Yeah, it does Who it knows? happen sometimes that you'll have clients that will not just go back into a past life to resolve something for them in this life, but that will be instrumental or helpful to the person in that past life. Um, uh, do you mean like they might clear up something and then their life actually changes? Do you, is that what you mean? I, I mean like having an impact on the parallel life, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so just like in the example where you mentioned like how helping the 
I tend to say the person, but I guess it's still yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, like it would be helping them transition. Um, could you be helping them with anything else or does this happen sometimes? Um, so the help uh, that they go through um, is is whatever they need in that life um, from what I what I can see. But I am absolutely sure um, I haven't done that kind of thing yet where we specifically like go and ask the person like what else do you need help with or something like that right um usually i'll ask the person in hypnosis okay i want you to go where you're meant to go in that lifetime right now that needs healing right so it's kind of guided that way right so you're taken to what exactly they need in that life but to do it for anything if i'm getting your question correct um to do it for multiple things like whatever's going on for them I am sure you could. I just haven't done that yet. Yeah. Does that does that make sense? I hope I yeah. Am. Yeah, it does. And somehow I don't know how this came back to me, but you were saying about the importance of closing off a life when you're working with a hypnotist and um, making sure that they're able to do that. Um, so somehow, just minutes later after we passed that subject, the yeah. question came into my mind: What can happen if somebody doesn't do that? Mm hmm. So when somebody doesn't close off a life for a client, sometimes, not all the time, um, but sometimes uh, the thoughts about that life can kind of wiggle their, their way into your mind. The, the thoughts, if, if you say did something bad in that life, like, I mean, we've all, if we think about it, if, if we've lived all these lives, countless lives, I mean, we've really been on both sides of everything, right? So um, if you've done something bad, like you're in a war and you, you know, killed somebody or something, I, I do not want you walking out of my office having grief or, or sadness or, or shame about that, right? So the reason why, so we'll take that as an example. Um, if you were in a war and that happened, the reason why we close off the life is so that you can walk out knowing that that was all part of the plan, right? That's what you chose going into the life. Maybe that person is playing out karma with you that you that you had that battle with, right? Maybe they're in your life right now and and uh, you can learn about how how to go about life with this person in it now. You want to understand why. You don't want to just get there and go, oh, I I was in a war and I did this bad thing and then come out of hypnosis and and go into your regular life, right? <laughs> you don't wanna you don't wanna do that. You want to be looking at it from a wisdom standpoint. Um you, you do not want clients, whether online or in the office, um uh, hanging up or walking out of the office saying to themselves oh my gosh i did such a bad thing in that life yeah you don't want that so that's why it's important to close off a life with wisdom and understanding and healing um so that you can move forward in this life and go oh yeah okay i i got to experience a past life yeah maybe i did a couple bad things and maybe i did a couple wonderful things um, but this is why, this is why, because, because that's what I needed to learn, you know? Absolutely. And we were mentioning earlier, and I wanted to get a bit deeper into that, people mm -hmm. uh, going into the life between lives and needing the counsel of light and getting support and insights for the challenges that they're going through right now. Do you have any interesting stories with one of your clients that received the wisdom and guidance that you can share with us mm -hmm. yeah there's so there's so many i'm trying to whittle it down to one i think people uh, just to frame it for you um i think people are just really curious right it doesn't we often look i think for solutions outside of ourselves um at people that may be smarter than us or our bosses or um our parents and 
where rarely do we think the answers or the guidance that we're looking for could be within ourselves so it's really yeah. fascinating to explore that topic i think when we're feeling stuck or um we're going through challenges and we don't quite understand why no absolutely absolutely so um yeah uh when clients let's say let's say go to the council right like you mentioned I've had it where the council is, well, clients have had it, I've seen it, um, where the council is sort of like a, like podiums, right? And, and beings behind pedestals kind of po podium, um, almost like when you go to court and you see, not, not judgmental or anything like that, but they're, they're sort of sitting behind a higher level, um, desk again, no judgment there, right? When you go to the council, when you go to a life between, as you've probably noticed from NDEs, like there is no, there's zero, zero judgment here. Uh, also, the council, I've, uh, with clients experience that they're sitting around like a, like a white light oval shaped table. Um, this has happened a lot, actually, <laughs> where they're where they're either at podiums or they're around this oval shaped table, which is really interesting to me because everyone says it's oval, and I'm going, okay, <laughs> like that's that's really cool because you know you don't know you and you don't know you and you know it's not like you're talking and you know telling each other about this oval table, um, but it just seems to come up, and uh, one cl one client was. <laughs> she's so beautiful client she's so excited to be at the table right but she's standing away from the table and I said to her you know because she was really excited to be there and just uh the feelings were were coming out and and she she was getting so caught up in the excitement about it that it was like pulling her out of it if that makes sense um, so to settle down and and like feel into the experience more I just asked her, I said, do you want to just sit down at the table? <laughs> just sit down at the table and just like you're having a conversation, right? Um, and, uh, and, and she just had this, um, this, this conversation, right? She tried her best to have this conversation with them. Uh, oftentimes people, uh, clients will get there and we're waiting because we're still stuck in the humanness of ourselves we're sort of we're sort of waiting for mouths to move right <laughs> to, to to receive information but oftentimes i'll have to say to the client like okay you know don't don't look at their mouth or their face or whatever usually the the person's the other person's face is like all light but feel the message right it's about it's about really understanding how you receive a message from the other side um, sometimes people feel it in their heart, the understanding of it. Sometimes, um, guides, higher self counsel souls will, will show you, right? If, if a client's having trouble, um, listening or hearing through their heart, I'll say, you know, have, have them show you, you know, visually what you're maybe ne uh, meant to do next. This uh, one one person recently that comes to mind that was really um, interesting is that there um, they had been dealing with a, a a problem a problematic relationship in their life, um, and they didn't realize that they had finished their karma with it. And they were really messed up about it before the session. So what they were shown was um, the, the, it was a metaphorical representation of this relationship with, with this person. But it was sort of encased in something very strong. And it was sort of as if it was put away right? They were, they, it had been encased, they're done with it, and it was put away, right? They don't need to work on that karmic relationship any longer. They're, they, they've, they're finished with it, right? 
So that was, uh, they, they said after the session, when we were debriefing, that that was just a beautiful gift that they got to see that, right? Because they were really messed up about that before coming in. Yeah, the, 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 the council has many messages. If I can say to your listeners, the main message, if you are wondering if you're on the path, which is the biggest question, the biggest question that people come to me with, I want to find out if I'm on the right path. You are, and it's not the greatest answer, but it is the answer. You are always on your path. You're always on your path. If you are following joy. Okay. So follow the joyful moments. If you lean into your joy, if you listen to your intuition, you can't not help but reach those milestones on your path. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. And when you were asking, you know, how do I know if I'm on the right path? I was thinking, is there such a thing as the right path and the wrong path? Or is it just like our path? And even if we take detours, because that's where free will comes into play, right? That we do choose. So it's not necessarily predefined that we'll hit those milestones, but there will be detours. So the path will just adjust to get us to where we need to go, it seems. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. Whatever you uh, decide to do, if you, if you, you know, let's say, let's say you are struggling with, <laughs> this is a big contrast, but let's say you're struggling with becoming an artist or working for corporate, right? What do I do? Which path is the right path? Both paths are the right path. As long as you're following your joy, right? Bring, bring those, and you don't have to be joyful 24 seven, but if you're finding those moments and, and really just feeling into who you are and your, you know, authenticity and, um, and, and feeling connected, you know, that, that you're on your path. And like you said, you, you can't, you can't do it wrong. Right. As ND years have taught us and, and, and life between lives has taught us is when we get there, whatever we've done, we're celebrated, right? Um, yes, if you've had a hard life or you've made life hard for others, there is a healing uh, place where you go, apparently, first to really feel into what went on in that life, right? And to let it go and heal and have other souls help you heal. Um, but you're always learning, right? As a soul, you're always growing, you're always expanding. So, you know, absolutely, you're, you're on your path, just lean into your joy. You know, think about your hobbies. If you don't have any hobbies, try to think back to when you were a kid and your creativity and you're just so into the world and you're getting into stuff, right? What brings you joy? Maybe it's coloring, <laughs> you know, that's beautiful. And that's part of your path, right? Um, maybe it's art, maybe it's singing, maybe it's just going to the park and watching the birds, you know, these are very simple. And I guess I'll, I'll also say that the best way to connect that I've found for myself, my, my clients, the best way to connect to your guides is to start asking yourself this simple, simple question. What is my next step? Right? What, what is my next step? And just listen. Just like if I was to ask you a question that I didn't know the answer to, and I would ask the question and I, I would stop, I would, I would stop my thinking and wait for you to answer. That's how we have, in hypnosis, people ask questions, right? What is the wisdom? What is my next step? 
What is the lesson here? That's that's where you start to really hone that muscle, let's call it, of listening to source, to guides, to higher self. What is what is my next step? And it doesn't have to be a life-changing answer. I joke with my clients, I said, it can be just empty the dishwasher, <laughs> right? It can be that simple. But if you're asking your guides, if you're if you're putting it out there that, you know, I, I'm I'm let's say relinquishing control over this situation, and I I kind of want my guides to move me. I, I kind of want source to be what drives this. Is um, they're they're gonna place you exactly where you meant to be, right? So maybe I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go like this part, but like. Maybe you go and empty the dishwasher, and then while you're emptying the dishwasher, you, um, I don't know, maybe you have a cup in the dishwasher that has a, a saying on it, right? And the saying is suddenly inspirational to you, and then you go and you're inspired to do something, you know? It's that simple. It's that simple. It doesn't have to be these life-changing messages every single time. I hope that yeah. makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And I love that. I think very often when we look for wisdom or answers, we expect it to be something um, almost uh, out of a book or philosophy or whatever. But sometimes it's just like the smallest step or the simplest thing, the thing that we very often we know we should do. We know what the next step is. Um, but sometimes it can even seem too small, too meaningless. Why would we even do it? And then we just don't do it and put it off for a very long time. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly it. Because it, oh, that must, it must not be my, my guides, my angels source talking because it's so simple. It's probably just my conscious mind saying it to me, right? That's what we say to ourselves. We question it. I mean, very often what I think, um, for myself, when I try to get guidance or answers, I always think, well, I don't think Jeff Bezos, when he set out to start Amazon, I don't think he was envisioning what Amazon is today, right? But I mm -hmm. think there's just like, you know, there's maybe a bigger vision, but the first goalpost is probably just get a website online, just sell one book and make sure somebody can purchase it. And you then see the second step that, oh, checkout isn't working, so I just need to fix that. The steps will appear because if your goal is, you know, I need to build the next Tesla, then it's so big, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know the first place to start it at. That's exactly So it. it's really about giving ourselves also a bit more grace and starting with the small things. And then those small things really add up to great things. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're right. No, it's been absolutely amazing speaking to you, Hillary. Tell me, where can people find you and your work? Yeah, so um I'll I'll below this uh video, um I'll have my uh calendly link. You can um sign up for a free forty five minute um just one on one just a chat about maybe your goals, maybe hypnosis, what's going on for you. Um, you can email me at info at somhypnosis.com. Um, and uh, I also have a podcast, which I'll share too in the links below. Um, just little, uh, my husband and I make the podcast, just, you know, bite-sized podcast to help you sort of unravel your mind and 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 just understand some some really interesting things about the mind and how you can help yourself feel better. Oh, thank 